And welcome back. In the United States, approximately one in six youth ages 6 to 17 experiences a mental health disorder each year, with half of all mental health conditions emerging by the age of 14. The JCCA's Westchester Day Treatment Program provides essential mental health services during the school day, alleviating the challenges parents face in accessing treatment, but also emphasizing the importance of integrating mental health support within educational settings. And joining me now is the supervisor of JCCA's Westchester Day Treatment Program, uh, Andrea Semino, and thank you so much for being with us. Hi, good morning. Yes, thank you for having me. And when we talk about mental health support, particularly amongst young people, I mean, as the times are going on, and we're looking mm -hmm. at some, we're living amongst some crazy times. Oh, for sure. And in addition to crazy times, I think the family dynamic has changed, life, the world, the whole thing. Absolutely. Um, you're finding more and more people come through your doors? Oh, my goodness, absolutely. And I believe, you know, after the pandemic, or actually during the pandemic, people had more of a greater awareness of mental health. I think, you know, the isolation really promoted people to start having, you know, thoughts about mental health, thinking about it, understanding what was going on with them. So, yes, I feel like more people are more aware and are looking for treatment. So now to see mental health professionals in schools mm -hmm. and really being able to provide those services, yeah. it's a great thing. Oh, we know that it, it, it wasn't always there. No, not And now at all. it's there. So talk to me a little bit about the role of mental health services. In yeah, schools. so it is absolutely huge. You know, we are actually the only day treatment program in Westchester County. And even though we serve Westchester County, we serve kiddos everywhere. So we serve kiddos from all five boroughs of New York, a lot of kiddos from the Bronx, from Orange, Dutchess, Putnam, all over. And the kiddos will just be here in the school day. We pull them out of their classes for sessions. They meet with their therapist. They may have individual therapy, group therapy. Therapy. They can even meet with their psychiatrist, uh, receive their medications as needed. And again, all without the parents having to make appointments, all without having to go home and then go back out again. They could just be right in school and just be able to, you know, they have a safe place to talk. They know where to go. Absolutely. What does it mean to be able to have mental health services in the school system, given the fact that it's an intervention of sorts, right, oh, that really helps out the student mm -hmm. and also the parent in several ways. No, absolutely. I think having someone in the school to really give that support, you know, we're not just seeing your kiddo once a week out of context. We're seeing them in their school environment. We're seeing them pretty much throughout the day. You know, I only, you know, I don't only see the kids I work with. I see all of the kids in the school. So they, you know, can start to see us as familiar faces. We say, good morning, you know, hey, do you need anything before you go to class? Anything like that. So really showing that, you know, we're here every day. We provide that support and you know giving an extra level of comfort and getting to see the behaviors right as they're happening i think is huge also a huge win i think is for families right oh, given, absolutely. given the fact that you have now a place that mm -hmm. you can access the support and get that much needed help absolutely. we know particularly communities of color and, mm -hmm. and you know ch uh, communities that are challenged there are this access to resources <sighs> to have this resource talk to me about the valuable asset of having a resource like that when we know that access to resources is a challenge in a lot of marginalized communities. No, absolutely. It is huge. It is huge. The fact that the kids can receive these services in school, you know, it eliminates first the barrier of transportation, right? The parents don't have to pay money for public transportation or gas money. Their kiddos are right in school. So they get there, you know, by taking the school bus or however they would get to school regardless. So transportation is eliminated. Additionally, uh, many families don't need to worry about child care. Like for example, if they're taking one of their other kids to an appointment and they have kiddos left at home, that barrier is removed by the kids getting their services right in school. So it really makes a huge difference. Yeah, we talked at the top about many people coming through your doors, right? How are you able to really deal with this ongoing demand of more and more services? I, I really wish, you know, we could provide more and more. You know, we do as much as we can, but our wait list, unfortunately, is ever growing. You know, mm. there is a scarcity of mental health services. As I said, we're the only day treatment in Westchester County. So we try to help as many people as we can, but there will be kiddos on the wait list, unfortunately, for even months at a time. So it can be very, very difficult to meet the needs of the communities. We hear the word treatment, and uh, how do you unpack that for somebody who's out there may not be so familiar? What, what modes of treatment do you have? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple of different trauma therapies that we use, and you know, a lot of these therapies can be used just to challenge negative ways of thinking or working to improve yourself or even unpacking some deeper traumas, right? I'm trained in EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. It's a specific type of trauma therapy. 
Um, that is something that, you know, when you address the trauma that you have experienced, whether or not you are aware of it, you may be also addressing your actions, your behaviors, your thoughts on situations simply by going deeper into what has happened to you. Yeah. So for people who want the resources, how do you go about accessing resources when you're in the school environment? Yeah, so I believe, you know, talking to your school counselors is such a great way of seeing what is out there. You know, unfortunately, not all schools have day treatment programs as much as I wish. I think that would be a huge resource in right. every school. Um, but seeing really what is out there, what is available, utilizing um, websites, you know, Psychology Today, social media, different areas where you can start to look up uh, different resources in your community. With the work that you do, obviously you've seen a lot of great success stories. Talk to me about the impact that you feel that it makes uh, since going into these schools. It's huge. It really is huge. You know, I think about a lot of my kiddos. Uh, there's one in particular I'm thinking about. I've worked with this child for years and he would be unable to even tell me what mood he was in, whether even if it was happy or annoyed. We weren't even able to talk about emotions. Now this kiddo will sit with me, will talk to me about what's going on, what has been stressing him, and he will even suggest coping skills on his own, which is huge. Even if I would say the word coping skills, he'd be looking at every direction other than me. Right. Uh, so getting to see that growth, getting to see him being able to handle his triggers, his stressors, and be safer with them. That's been huge. And it's like that for so many of our kiddos. And that's gotta be the win for you, right? Oh, 100%. I mean, to, to, to that's, see the progress it. and down through the years, you know, from the time that we start to where we are, you can be able to chart successful growth. Exactly, that's what it's all about. That's why they're coming here. That's what we're here for. That's, you know, how we're here to help. How have families received this, given the fact that you have this resource available, right? So are some families real reluctant, or how does it go? Uh, most families are pretty open. Like I said, we can make their lives easier by removing the barrier of transportation, um, you know, by working through their work hours, right? We're taking the kiddos while they're at work, while the kids are in school. A lot of families are really receptive. We also will provide family therapy too. And I would say a lot of families are involved in family therapy. They want to understand their kiddo. And more importantly, they wanna help their kiddo. So we get to, you know, connect with them, tell them, you know, what can we do? How can we support? And more importantly, what can they as the parent do? You know, there's been this huge stigma that's been associated with therapy oh, and sure. services. You, have you seen that? And mm -hmm. have you had a, yeah. Oh, <laughs> right, yeah. Okay, right. Oh, yeah. A lot, so have you had to climb a lot of high hurdles there? Absolutely. And I think, you know, just continuously showing that I'm there, you know, I'm not here to pass judgment. I'm here to help. Um, I think just keeping that consistency and just continuing to show that positivity, that warmth. You know, I've seen a lot of families come around. Of course, there can be resistance, right? And understandably so. Some people, they've had bad experiences. You know, when people hear social worker, they may think, you know, CPS, ACS, all kinds of different um, negative connotations. But, you know, I think once they get to know the program, kind of see, oh, okay, they are here to help the kids, you know, and more importantly, the kids like us most of the time. I think that that's huge. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's huge. So for people who want to find out more information, access to resources, stuff like that, where do they go? Absolutely. So they can go to our website, jccany.org. You can look at our social media, including Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, jccany. Hard to believe that we're almost at the holidays, right? I know, I know. I know. This year has flown by. But has it given you has it given you a sense of like a, a, a great on ramp in terms of like the work that you're doing because things are going by so quickly? Exactly. Yes, it has. You know, the months definitely fly by, especially in the school setting. And you know, we're also helping the kids start to prep for the winter coming up. You know, seasonal affective disorder is very much a real thing. You know, the sun is setting earlier and earlier. It can be really, really difficult for people's mental health. So being able to support them through the holidays, right? Because even though holidays are mostly a happy experience, they can bring up feelings of grief or feelings of sadness. You know, it's it's not just a one size fits all. So being able to support through those difficult feelings, regardless, you know, as we move into the holidays is right. huge. Well, great work that you're doing, Andrea. Thank you so thank much you. for the work that you're doing, impacting you. young people in such a tremendous way. And sometimes people don't say thank you. I just want to say thank you. Keep up the thank great work. Thank you so much, Darren. All thank right. you so much. Andrea Semino, our guest here. Now, listen, as she mentioned, give more information. You can visit their website at jccany.org. And uh, there you can find out how you can get the resources and also the help that you may need.